What's good, guys? This video is going to be um, regarding the Kanika Jenkins case. And specifically for those people who have bought into the narrative uh, regarding the Fowler twins. There's a lot of new people on the scene in the Kanika Jenkins case uh, as it goes on a rotation every once in a while. And... I want to explain um, where I think that came from. <laughs> it came from a content creator, actually a pair of content creators, who had gotten into a little bit of hot water. And in order to tread that very hot water they were in, this is the narrative that they tossed out there to the J4K community. And unfortunately... There were several people who had bought into it, hook, line, and sinker. Um, the story is interesting nonetheless, but I want you to note that there are no mention, zero mention, of Kanika Jenkins, of Chicago, of Teresa Martin, Kanika's mother, biological mother, uh, in this story. This is from the Charlie Project. Um, this photo on the screen now is the only known photograph of Yvonne Fowler as an infant. There are some age-enhanced photos. Um, we'll come back to that. Details of the disappearance. Yvonne and his sister Anisha are twins, the offspring of Patricia Fowler. The twins' disappearances were discovered in the summer of 2016. On June 20th, police went to the Fowler home on Bryant Street in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, with orders from the Allegheny County Department of Children, Youth, and Families, which they have abbreviated as CYF, to remove all of Patricia's children from her custody. She was under investigation for medical neglect of four of her children, all of them have serious medical conditions, and they had missed approximately six dozen medical appointments in total. The police removed the four children they found at the home, but on June the 6th, the CYF agency officials told them there were supposed to be six children. Both police and CYF were unable to find either Yvonne or Anisha, who would have been 17 years old by this time. Details regarding the twins' disappearance are, exact, are extremely sketchy. September the 11th, 2006 is the listed date of disappearance. They were seven years old at that time. However, family members haven't seen them since 2002 or 2003, when they would have been toddlers, and two landlords who rented to Patricia between 2006 and 2015 are sure Ivan and Anisha never lived with her. The only available photograph was taken when Yvonne and Anisha were infants. When questioned about her children's whereabouts, Patricia told several different stories, including that they were living with various friends or relatives in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. At one point, she claimed she'd sold Anisha and Yvonne to a casual acquaintance named Barbara for $2,000 each. Patricia retracted this statement when, she's told, when she was told it was a criminal offense to sell a child. Police have been unable to verify any of her explanations for her son and daughter's whereabouts. In an interview with WTAE, a Pittsburgh television station, Patricia stated a Cheryl Willis, a friend of the family, had stepped in and helped and taken them initially to North Carolina. And that was about 10 years back. She said her children had moved with Willis to Georgia when they were 13. Patricia had not mentioned Willis's name to law enforcement. She told WTAE she is learning disabled and became confused during the interrogation, but maintained, I didn't sell my kids and they're not missing. In August of 2016, Patricia was charged with endangering the welfare of children, obstructing a child welfare investigation, and concealing the whereabouts of the children. 
Later that same month, her 18-year-old son, Detwan Fowler, and I may be messing up his name and I apologize if I am, was charged with intimidation. I'm sorry, guys. I keep having someone message me on Facebook while I'm trying to do this video. I apologize. I'll start that over. Later that same month, later that same month, her 18-year-old son, Detwan Fowler, and I may be mispronouncing his name, and I apologize in advance for that, was charged with intimation, is what that word is. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to be intimidation or if it's supposed to be imitation. <laughs> Regardless, relation or obstruction in child abuse cases, criminal conspiracy, obstructing administration of law or other government function, and giving false identification to law enforcement. He admitted he'd contacted police via a Facebook message and a cellular phone text message, both times claiming he was Ivan and that Ivan and Anisha were in Atlanta, Georgia area. He told investigators he sent the messages so they would stop bothering him and his mother with questions about the twins' whereabouts. Photos of Detwan and Patricia are posted with this case summary. In May of 2017, a judge threw out most of the charges against Patricia, leaving only the one of unsworn falsification in relation to her misleading statements to the police. A police officer who testified at the hearing said he believed Anisha and Ivan were dead, based off of Datuan's, or Datuan's statements that they were, quote, sick when he last saw them over a decade earlier. However, the judge stated there was insufficient evidence that Patricia had endangered or harmed the twins or concealed their whereabouts from their father and that she could not have obstructed justice in a child abuse case because there was no evidence of child abuse. Other charges against Patricia remained outstanding, however. In July, she pleaded guilty to endangering the welfare of a child, unsworn falsification, and public assistance false statements. She was sentenced to four years of probation and was ordered to pay $57,000 in restitution. This was the public assistance payment she received for Avon and Anisha excuse me, after they were no longer in Patricia's care. As part of the plea agreement, the charges against Detwan were dropped. On November the 8th, 2000, when Ivan was two years old, he was severely burned over 46% of his body. His mother didn't call an ambulance until the next day, and he remained hospitalized until December the 13th. That would have been of the year 2000. Patricia claimed Ivan's older brother had accidentally scalded him in the bathtub. The twins were t both taken from Patricia's care after that incident but they were returned within a couple of days, and CYF caseworkers never notified police. CYF continued to have contact with the, Fowler, with the Fowlers after that, mostly involving mm -hmm. Patricia's failure to make sure her children attended school. There is no record of Ivan or Anisha ever having been enrolled in school in Pennsylvania or other states, and none of the relatives police have been able to locate either had the children or knew their whereabouts. Two of the twin siblings stated first one and then the other was simply gone one day. The social worker who thought they saw the twins in 2006 later admitted they might have been mistaken as the child they thought was Yvonne didn't appear to have extensive scarring he should have had from his scalding. In spite of this, both Patricia and Detwan insist Anisha and Yvonne are alive and well. Their cases remain unsolved. It says the investigating agency is the Penn Hills Police Department, and it's got a phone number for them. The Charlie Project also used NAMAS, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazettes, WTAE, WPXI, the New York Daily News, CBS Pittsburgh, the Washington Post, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and the Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Um, it says this has been updated five times since October the 12th, 2004, and it was last updated July the 18th, 2017. So nothing else has changed in this case since July the 18th of 2017, okay? 
It says they were missing since September the 11th, 2006. Missing from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They're classified as endangered and missing. Uh, Yvonne is the male. Anisha is the female. Race is black. Date of birth, 10-23-1998. They would be 22 years old today. They were 7 years old at the time of their disappearance. They do not have a height and weight for them. Distinguishing characteristics. African American male, black hair, brown eyes. When he was 2 years old, Yvonne sustained 2nd and 3rd degree scalding burns to 46% of his body, including his hands and face. He will probably still have scars from the incident. It says, Yvonne, circa 1998, seven years prior to his disappearance. More recent photos are unavailable. Age progression to age 17, circa 2015. Dwan Fowler, Patricia Fowler. Alright, so... The very last photo is Patricia Fowler. The one above that is her son, her older son, Dwan. And... This top picture is actually Yvonne Fowler as an infant. And the one below it is actually an age progress photo of what he would look like today. And they have included that scarring um, as best they can on his face. This is Anisha V. Fowler as an infant. The only photograph available of her. This is an aged progressed photo of her which means that's not actually her that's what they would assume she would look similar to in age now again that's Detwan and then Patricia Fowler at the bottom same information uh, goes for her except the distinguishing characteristics she did not receive the burns everything else should be the same Yes, this entire story is exactly the same as it should be. Now, this is an article from July the 12th, 2018. So this is after the Charlie Project last updated their information. And it just says, For two years, the Penn Hills police have tracked down tips trying to figure out what happened to the Fowler twins. Yvonne and Anisha Fowler have not been seen in more than a decade, and the only woman who may have the answers isn't talking. It started two years ago when Penn Hills Police de Detective Leo Joe went to a home in Penn Hills to conduct a welfare check. I figured it was a simple misunderstanding, and when we first talked to her, she was great. She invited us in the house, showed us around, and said, here's all the information. Joe told Target 11 investigator Rick Earl. Patricia Fowler told Joe her friends had gone to live with relatives down south. Police investigated and did not find any evidence to back that up. They brought Fowler in for questioning and her story changed. At one point, she said she sold them, Joe said. After a few minutes, we told her that's not something she should have done. She changed her mind and she said, well, then I didn't sell them. Police filed several charges against Fowler, including endangering the welfare of children. Last year, a judge dismissed most of the charges. Fowler was able to plead guilty to two misdemeanors and was given credit for time served and released from jail. Police say they still get tips about the twins. Every day I glance at something, Joe told Target 11. People still ask what's going on with it. We still get leads. Not as many as we used to, but we, we still get them and we're still looking. Target 11 tried to track down Patricia Fowler. We found her mother instead. She told us she has no idea where Fowler is now, and she said she has not seen Yvonne and Anisha in years. They were born in 1998 and will turn 20 in October. The last time relatives remember seeing them, they were just two or three years old. Yvonne was in the hospital at the time for an accidental hot water burn. I sure do want to know the truth, but if she don't want to tell it, that's up to her, said Fowler's mother. I turned it over to God, so it's in God's hands. Joe just wants answers and knows Fowler could be the key to the case. 
Our main concern is just finding these kids and making sure they're okay or finding out what happened to them, he said, so the family and their relatives can have closure on this one way or another. That's the end of that story. Um, let me see if I can play this. The grandmother of missing twins from Penn Hills, the mother of Patricia Fowler, no one has seen them in more than a decade. Target 11 investigator Rick Earl live in Penn Hills after talking with her and the lead investigator about the case that has troubled police for two years. Rick? Yeah, David, that's right. I did talk to Patricia Fowler's mother tonight. She is urging her daughter to come clean about the missing twins. Meanwhile, police here in Penn Hill say it's still an open investigation and they're still tracking down leads. Is this something you think about every day? I do. Not a day goes by when Penn Hills police detective Leo Joy doesn't think about the missing Fowler twins. Every day I, I glance at something or, you know, people still ask tons of questions about it. What's going on with it? And we still did. We still get leads. Again, not as many as we used to, but we still get them. We're still, we're still looking. I'm the mystery began two years ago when Joy went to a home in Penn Hills to conduct what he thought would be a simple welfare check. I figured it would be a, it's a simple misunderstanding. And when we first talked to her, she was great, invited us in the house, showed us around, and uh, said, here, here's all the information. Patricia Fowler told Joy that the twins seen in this baby picture had gone to live with relatives down south. But that information didn't pan out. Police then brought Fowler in for questioning. And she told another story. And at one point, she said she sold them. After a few minutes, we told her that wasn't, that's not something that she should have done. It's she, a crime. Correct. She changed her uh, mind and she said, well, then I didn't sell them. Police filed several charges against Fowler, including endangering the welfare of children. But last year, a judge dismissed most of the charges. Fowler pleaded guilty to two misdemeanors, was given credit for time served, and then released from jail. Do you have any idea where Patricia is? No, I don't. No. I really don't. I wish I did know, but I don't. We tried to track down Fowler. Think about Her mother in McKeesport well, told me she had no idea where she was. And she said she hadn't seen the twins in years. When's the last time you saw the kids? When they were little. That's the last time. That's been a long time, so I don't, I don't even know what they look like. The twins were born in 1998. They will turn 20 in October. This is a computer-generated picture of what they might look like. The last time relatives remember seeing them, they were two or three years old, and Ivan was in the hospital for an accidental hot water burn. I sure do want to know the truth, but if she don't want to tell, that's up to her. So ain't nothing I can do. I, I turned it over to God, so it's in God's hands. And she holds the key. I mean, she could clear this whole thing up. I would think so. Yeah, she, she just, just told you the truth. Correct. Everything has been a lie. Everything that I can think of, not one thing has turned out to be true. Our main concern is just finding these kids and making sure that they're okay or you know, finding out what happened to them so that the family and their relatives can have closure on this one way or the other. Now, police did use a cadaver dog to search some areas east of Pittsburgh, but never turned up anything. Patricia Fowler has nine children. Police say they talked to them as well, and they said the twins were there one day, and then all of a sudden, they were gone. David? Now, Rick, were police upset that the serious charges against Patricia Fowler were dismissed? Well, David, I asked the detective that very question. He said, look, it's my job to build a case, gather evidence, and then file charges. But he said once it's in the court system, it's basically out of his hands. That is the very latest reporting live this evening in Penn Hills. Rick Earl, Channel 11 News. So I would like to pose the question to those that actually believe that storyline, because that's what it is. It's a story. How would you explain this picture of Kanika as a baby? If she was last, if the Ivan and Anisha Fowler were last seen um, at two and three years old, how would you explain this picture of Kanika as a baby? I'll wait. It wouldn't make sense. It simply wouldn't make sense. And this is not the only baby picture we have of Kanika. It's just one that I had handy. Um, you guys got to start doing your own research. You've got to. We know who Kanika's parents are. It's wrote on the girls' MySpace page. Um, why you would question 
any of that is beyond me. I, I don't even understand it. Um, Jay Money even said, yes, that is my sister's child. <laughs> um, I, I don't understand the thinking and the thought process behind it. Um, I was even told on in my comments the other day that there were no school records of Kanika. And Cassie, Chloe Alvera, even did an entire video showing that. Um, and that was completely false. That was just someone uh, who wanted to believe something and was spouting out falsehoods. And that's the problem with the Kanika Jenkins case. Is you have people who haven't done their research uh, following behind channel holders um, who are putting out false information. And it's sad because I've said this a million times. At the end of the day, we still have a 19-year-old that was found in a freezer of a hotel that's someone's child, that's someone's aunt, sister, cousin, friend, granddaughter, and you're making a mockery of this case. And it disgusts me because a lot of us have put in a lot of time into this case and focused a lot of attention on it only to have someone go behind us and put out information that's not true and then we've got to keep repeating the same thing over and over to try to clear it back up again. So, I challenge you, because the burden of proof lies on you. If that's the narrative that you want to believe, the burden of proof lies on you to prove that. And if you can't prove that, I don't understand why you're continuously going around saying it. It's very frustrating to even hear. I don't entertain it on my channel, because I know better. <laughs> so, I just wanted to put that story out there. And ask you that simple question, how you would even explain any of the pictures of Kanika as a baby, a toddler. I would like, I would be interested to hear that because um, it's not true. There's no connection to the Fowler twins in Chicago at all. We just read the article. We've read several articles now. Nothing connecting anything to Chicago. So how that even came into play, I'll never know. Other than what I said. Someone got in hot water and spilt out a, um, a lie. That's, it's just a blatant lie. Uh, I thought we had covered this, but there are still people who are believing this. Um, I'm going to leave it at that, but um, you guys have a great night. Thanks for watching.